Let's talk about why diets don't work. Diets, weight loss challenges, fitness challenges, whether it's eight weeks, 12 weeks, 28 days, 75 days, weight loss diets don't work. Diets don't work. The statistics show that most people who reach their weight loss goals through dieting end up putting it back on. There's a reason for this. There's a reason behind this. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about why diets don't work and what to do instead, because there is a better way. And as a nutritionist, I have years and years of experience of supporting people in ditching the diets and still reaching their weight loss goals, still releasing the weight that they they don't want to be carrying, still reaching their health goals, whether it's skin related, hormone related, energy related. It's possible to do this and it's actually optimal to do this without dieting. So why don't diets work? Why do we find ourselves yo-yo dieting, trying one after the other of these fad diets that just keep coming out and keep providing this horrible advice ultimately for us? They don't work for a number of reasons. The first one is they are generally an all or nothing approach. So what I mean by an all or nothing approach is when we think of dieting and when we think of most diets, it can be a very restrictive way of going about it. So maybe it is a um, weight loss diet where there's a certain amount of calories that we're focusing on, or it's a ketogenic diet and we're focusing on fat and protein and we're not having any carbs, or it's a carnivore diet and we're only eating meat, or it's a plant-based diet and we're only eating plants, or it's a paleo diet and we're only eating certain foods it's a whatever diet insert the diet atkins diet like there's so many different diets i couldn't even go through them all here if i wanted to but ultimately they all have some form of all or nothing or some form of restriction whether it's restricting the amount of calories you're eating such a common one when it comes to dieting or it's restricting certain food groups that you can or can't eat even just that idea that you can and can't eat certain foods That is not establishing a healthy relationship with food and diets don't help us cultivate a healthy relationship with food, which when we don't have a healthy relationship with food, we're not going to end up being able to have our optimal health and well-being. There's going to be some consequences there. So they have that all or nothing approach where it's like, okay, I'm starting this diet, which means I can't have this, 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 this. This is what I can have. This is what my meal plan says I can have. This is what the guideline says I can have. This is what my meal delivery is coming and delivering to me. And this is what I can eat. It's very restrictive and it's very all or nothing. It's not teaching us to have that balanced approach and understand how to actually have the balance and not just be like, yeah, balanced, I'm intuitive eating, I'm eating what I want, but actually we're emotionally eating or actually we're eating things that aren't supporting our body or we don't feel good with or we're not fully in tune with our body. So This all or nothing reproach is what keeps us going back and forth in this, oh, I'm starting Monday and on Monday I'm doing this. I'm starting this diet. I'm starting this fitness plan. I'm starting whatever it may be. It's all or nothing. And then what happens is it sets us up for failure because ultimately the way that human behavior works, the way that we create new habits is not through big drastic changes like what a lot of diets recommend or challenges recommend. What is best for us as humans is small incremental changes that build up over time, that compound. So when we are going for this all or nothing approach, we're setting ourselves up to be like, cool, I'm changing all of these behaviors or I'm completely changing the way that I eat. And it's too much. Our body feels unsafe. It's all unfamiliar. It's way out of our comfort zone. And instead of edging our way there and slowly building up, we've gone, okay, bam, I'm doing it all at once. And sooner or later, we won't be able to hold the level of willpower or motivation that is needed for that kind of drastic change. And our safety strategies, our um, patterning is going to come back and we're just going to end up back where we started rather than if we're slowly building up we're able to sustain that so in the way that they have this all or nothing approach 
they're also not sustainable because they're not designed to support human behavior change. They're not designed to support building healthy habits. If you've ever read any habit book, you'll see that the best way to create new habits is small changes, incremental changes, consistency, as opposed to completely trying to overhaul our life or one area of our life like food overnight and expecting ourselves to be able to hold that level of change. It becomes really difficult when we follow these all or nothing approaches and they are absolutely not sustainable and like I mentioned earlier they're not helping us cultivate that healthy relationship with food where we know how to fuel our body with real food majority of the time but we also don't have all of this guilt or shame if we're eating something that's not allowed quote unquote, on this diet, right? So if we're doing a diet and it's telling us, okay, you can't have anything with refined sugar. And then we end up eating something with refined sugar because sooner or later, it's probably going to happen. Let's be honest. Then what happens is immense amounts of guilt or shame or regret come up and then it can feed emotional eating and other behaviors that are trying to help us soothe ourselves from this guilt and this shame that we are feeling because we went against what we told ourselves we were going to do or what this diet told us we needed to do to reach our goals. So it's not a sustainable approach and it's actually cultivating that really unhealthy relationship with food rather than us knowing that when we just focus on eating real food majority of the time, it gives us so much more freedom and flexibility. And when we actually heal our relationship with food, we're going to desire to fuel our body with the real foods, with the healthy options, with the things that help us feel good. And we're going to naturally eat less of the processed refined foods anyway. So when we do it from this more healthy, sustainable and balanced approach, it's actually dealing with it from the root as opposed to dieting, which is not dealing with the root. Dieting is kind of like a Band-Aid approach to weight loss or your health goals or fitness goals or whatever it may be. It's not actually getting to the root. And the root is ultimately healing our relationship with food and understanding how to fuel our body with nutritious food, real food, what that actually looks like, how to actually create healthy meals for ourselves, not have to be following a meal plan or guidelines and having to be told what to do. And this takes me into the next reason that diets don't work. It's because they lack the education more often than not. More often than not, they're telling you what you can or can't eat. They're giving you a meal plan. They're giving you guidelines that you have to follow, but they're not teaching you the why behind it. They're not giving you the knowledge to be able to fuel your body in the way that best suits you because again it's individual and I'll talk about that in a moment too but they're not providing you with this knowledge and education that will help you actually implement positive changes long term right so you might be all good when you've got that meal plan to follow but what happens when that meal plan runs out or what happens when you do feel like something different because you're sick of the same meals that have been provided or what happens when you don't have access to certain ingredients that are in the meal on the meal plan or in the recipes so when we're actually focusing on an educational approach and you're learning, okay, what foods are actually supporting my health, which is actually really simple, guys. We all know eating meat and veg, real foods, not processed foods, majority of the time is going to be the most supportive and beneficial for us. But we don't do it because there's a, a myriad of reasons to do with our mindset, our emotional health, our nervous system, and all of these other factors that aren't addressed in diets that get in our way, right? So if you're someone who's like, I know what to do, I have learned kind of like the foundations of what I am, what I'm better to do, best off doing to nourish my body and feel good and meet my weight release goals and meet my health goals and meet my fitness goals, but I still struggle to do it. It's because there's another layer. It's not just about the food. It's not just about the exercise. It's not about those things that diets often focus on. It's actually a very holistic picture. And again, that's another reason that diets don't work because they're not holistic and they're not individualized. But coming back to that point around lacking the education, if we're constantly relying on an external source, whether it's a particular person or a particular diet or particular framework, 
we're giving our power to that diet, to that person, to that framework, to that meal plan, to that fitness plan, whatever it is. And we're not empowering ourselves with the knowledge to know what to do and to be able to do this long term. Because realistically, we don't want to be following a diet. We don't want to have to follow a meal plan to the T for the rest of our lives. It's not sustainable. We live these long, beautiful lives. And it's so beneficial to actually be empowered with the knowledge and be empowered in trusting ourselves to know what is best for us and not outsourcing our power to other people, to different diets. So the lack of education is another one of those things that doesn't support us when it comes to dieting and one of those reasons that diets don't work. So that's one. And then I mentioned around the, them not being holistic. So Diets focus a lot on food predominantly. Sometimes you'll get diets that focus on exercise as well or fitness. Sometimes you'll get diets that mention water intake and things like that as well, but they're not fully holistic. So when it comes to our health, it's not just about the food we eat. It's not just about the way we move our body. Everything we do impacts our health. And there are some things that have really big impacts on our health. So this is where I always talk about the five core healthy habits. So one of those is eating real food majority of the time. One of them is daily movement. Another is restful sleep. Another is optimal hydration. And last but definitely not least is stress management and relaxation. So those five core healthy habits are five of the most important things that we can do when it comes to our health goals, when it comes to our weight release goals. And as you can see, that's very holistic. Food is only one of those. And if you're on a quote unquote better diet, they may address a couple of those other things like the movement or maybe the hydration. Some may even talk about stress or sleep, which is fantastic. But more often than not, it's just like eat this, these amount of calories, these particular food groups, these particular macronutrients. It's focused very much around just what you're eating and treating your body more like a calculator, being like calories in, calories out. There's so much more to it than just the food. And there's so much more to it than just calories in, calories out. Because when it comes to nutrition, our body needs certain foods for certain different functions within our body. It needs to contain different nutrients, which we get from real foods, which are going to go into the different biochemical pathways, which are going to go into creating the different structures within our body, which are going to support the different systems. When we're only focusing on the calories, when we're only focusing on the numbers, we're not factoring in the quality of the foods where they come from. And therefore, we're not necessarily getting the nutrients and the range of nutrients that we need for optimal health. So we might be meeting our energy requirements or we might be doing the whole calories in, calorie out and making sure we're under the amount so that we can lose the fat, lose the weight, whatever it is. But that's not actually going to be supportive for our health long term because it's focusing just on the energy and it's not focusing on all of the nutrients that are needed for many different functions and structures. So if we're just focusing on calories and we're just looking at the food, we could be actually leading to imbalances in other systems. For example, if we're eating certain diet that limits our calorie intake and we're not getting enough calories to meet our basal metabolic rate and to actually give us what we need to function at a rest state, we can cause our body to be stressed. And stress levels is one of the biggest things that can impact our overall health, especially our weight release goals. So if you are trying to lose weight and you're only looking at the food and you're eating less food than you need, you'll actually be stressing your body out and that will inhibit your ability to reach and maintain your weight loss goals. And that's just from the food perspective. Then, of course, as I mentioned, it's holistic. So where is stress having an impact in your life and where do you need to to address and acknowledge your stress levels and regulate your nervous system in your life to be able to actually allow your body to relax, allow your body to feel safe, to allow that weight to be released. Because if we feel unsafe, our body is going to hold on to that weight because that is a safety mechanism, a protection mechanism. So that's one of the holistic factors. Looking at something like stress, we've got things like our hormones. If we are limiting particular food groups, like let's say we're cutting out carbs, we actually really need carbohydrates for optimal hormone health, especially as women. 
So if we're cutting out entire food groups that are really important for particular systems like our endocrine system, like our hormones, that could actually be messing up our hormones. So we might think that we're reaching our health or our weight loss goals, but it's actually causing other problems within our body, which are then going to lead to us not being able to sustain those results because our hormones are out of balance and or our hormones are influencing it. So we can't even reach those goal, goals in the first place. So that's one other example. But if we're just focusing on the calories and we're not focusing on the foods we're getting them from and actually getting enough calories for what we need, it's going to over time have a detrimental impact towards us. So this is another reason why we might find we can get short term quick wins on diets or challenges, but we're unable to sustain them. It's because they're not setting us up with that healthy foundation and the knowledge to know what to do and fuel our bodies effectively to be able to keep doing it long term. So that lack of education piece is huge and the lack of holistic nature is also huge as you can see. Now I've also alluded to the fact that diets are not individualized. They're not personalized to you and what you need. And this is one of the reasons why having that education can be really important. And it's why through my programs and working with my clients, it's always an individualized approach, even in the group programs like the Real Food Way, which teach you how to create these healthy eating habits and teach you to simplify nutrition and ditch the diets once and for all. I'm still giving you the tools and the frameworks to work out how much you need for your individual needs, because everybody is different. And there are many different factors that will indicate how much of different macronutrients we need, how many calories we do need, what our basal metabolic rate is, how we should be approaching food. It's not just like a generalized approach where it's like, okay, this is what everyone needs. We're highly individualized. We all need a different amount of protein. We all need a different amount of calories. And if diets are just designed in a way where it's just like, okay, this is appealing to the general population, they're not factoring in you and your personal needs. And this means that it's not going to be sustainable for you. It's not going to be meeting what you require individually. And therefore, it's not going to work for you, whether it does work long term or it doesn't even work long, sorry, short term or it doesn't even work short term, regardless it's still not going to work long term because sooner or later it's going to catch up with you that you're not meeting your individual needs and requirements um, and that's a really important thing so again that's why that education is so important it's why having more individualized or personalized advice and support is important and it can be done in group settings or through program settings but usually it's not through diets usually diets are kind of like a this is what you do black and white approach that all or nothing approach as I mentioned earlier so having more individualized advice having a more individualized approach is also going to be really important and again this is where that education comes in because no one knows you better than you and yes it's so beneficial to have someone teaching you and guiding you but doing that in a way where you are empowered with the tools and the knowledge and the resources to be able to make these decisions and be able to sustain this long term is a really really important factor Another reason that diets don't work is because they celebrate quick wins. Now, chances are that your health conditions or your weight gain hasn't happened overnight. It wasn't a quick thing. So why do we expect that it's going to be a quick process to turn it around and reverse that? Maybe it's taken you years and years for a particular health condition to develop. Maybe it's taken years and years for that weight to slowly increase and increase. It's not going to be like, cool, in eight weeks, we've completely reached our weight release goals or we've completely reversed a condition or everything is sunshine and rainbows again. It can take time. The way the body works, there's so many intricacies that do take time. And yes, you can see it's like quick results and instant wins, but it doesn't mean you're going to reach these goals straight away. And diets, the way they approach them, it's like, yeah, you can do this in a really short amount of time. And I get it. This sells. This is like, yes, we want that. We want that instant gratification. We've 
we as humans are wired to love instant gratification and want that kind of like quick fix. Like I always hear people say if they could just take a pill and their problems would be solved, they'd do it. And of course, we like the ease and the convenience. Humans are inherently quite lazy and we love comfort, convenience and ease. And there's no shame in that. But realizing that things do take time, especially if we want them to last. This is one of the things with diets. You may see quick wins. You may see that number on the scale drop quickly. You may see things like that happening fast, but ultimately the quick wins tend to fade pretty quickly also. So just as quick as you got that, they'll probably undo itself or reverse because it's not sustainable, because it's not doing it in a way that's tailored to you, that's a long-term sustainable approach. So by focusing on quick wins and celebrating quick wins and saying, yeah, we can get you these results in really short amount of time. Yes, it can be really appealing, but ultimately what you want to focus on is the longevity of it. Like I mentioned earlier, we have these long, beautiful lives. There is no rush, but we are in this kind of rushing mentality, always wanting like to tick off those goals and be like, yes, I feel happy now. or I'll feel happy when I reach that particular goal or when this is fixed. But how can we actually enjoy the process there, enjoy the journey and see that that's all part of it and know that over time we will reach those goals and be able to sustain them. So giving ourselves that patience and understanding that if we allow more time to get there, it also means that they're going to last for longer because we're going to have done it in a way where we've educated ourselves, where we've um, done it in a way where it's more sustainable for ourselves, where we've worked on the holistic nature of these things and not just kind of like gone, all right, I'm overhauling my life, starting this diet on Monday and in eight weeks, everything is happening and I've reached all my goals. When we can actually be like, all right, cool, let's slow down. It's been years for me to get to this particular weight or years for me to develop this health condition and I've noticed it getting worse and worse. Not saying it's going to take years and years for you to see the results or for you to reach your goal, but taking some of that pressure off as well can be an absolute game changer. And knowing that you will reach that, but also when you're attached to reaching that, it will make it harder to reach because you're going to feel more pressure and that's going to lead back to more of that stress and more of that nervous system dysregulation, which negatively impacts your health and your weight release goals. So taking the pressure off, enjoying the journey, enjoying the process of nourishing yourself and not doing it for the end result, doing it because you deserve to feel amazing. You deserve to enjoy the process and you deserve to respect yourself in these ways by nourishing your body with real food, by moving your body in a way that you enjoy and love and that makes you feel good, by hydrating, by prioritizing sleep, by managing your stress levels. You deserve all of that. And when you can come from this place of self-respect and knowing how much you deserve to feel amazing, that is going to be a complete game changer than being like, cool, I've got to do this diet because I've got to reach this goal because then everything will be fixed. And then I'll be happy. Then I'll be more confident. Then I'll fit into these clothes. Whatever the reason is that you're prolonging or putting in the future, thinking, okay, when that happens, then I'll be happy. Then blah, blah, blah. You're separating yourself from it and you're creating so much pressure because you're telling yourself that until that happens, you can't be happy. And you're you're prolonging, you're, you're delaying your happiness, you're delaying that gratification, you're delaying the pleasure of being present and fulfilled as you go, not just when you reach that thing. Because let me tell you, there's always going to be another thing in the future, another shiny object that you're going to keep delaying that gratification and delaying that. So when you can bring it back and be like, cool, all right, my health is something that is important to me. I deserve to feel amazing and I'm going to just act that way. I'm going to treat myself and treat my body in the way that I know is best for me so that I can feel good. And yes, those health and weight release goals will happen over time as well because of the way that you're acting, because of the new behaviors that you are implementing from a really healthy and grounded place, not from a place of being like, I need to do this because I need to reach this goal because only then can I be happy. Only then can X, Y, Z happen. 
So really just bringing it back and seeing the power in not celebrating the quick wins. Yes, you can celebrate every step of the way. And I'm a big advocate for celebrating every little win, big, small, even celebrating the failures, because the more we can celebrate ourselves, the more enjoyable the whole process is. So really just reshaping our entire relationship with food and the way that we approach our health, it's going to make a massive difference. And it's another one of those reasons why diets don't work because they're focusing on the quick wins and they're telling you that, oh, if you're getting these quick wins, this is good. This is what we want. But then they're missing the point. They're not actually helping you make the long-term sustainable change. So to summarize, the reason that diets don't work is because they follow an all or nothing approach. They're not sustainable. They're not individualized. They're not holistic. They celebrate the quick wins. And there's a lack of education. So can you see how there's so many variables and you can probably see from your experience with trying different diets or jumping on and off different challenges, how all of this is making sense, right? It makes such a difference when we can step back and be like, okay, so diets don't work. And this is the reason that diets don't work. So this is what to do instead. What to do instead is one, understand what to do to fuel your body with real food majority of the time. Because let me tell you, as a nutritionist, after my years of studying and years of experience in the industry helping people, it all comes back to eating real food majority of the time, right? Doesn't mean we have to be perfect, doesn't mean we can only eat real food, but eating food, real food majority of the time is what is going to be most supportive for our health and for our weight, weight release goals, if that's one of our goals as well. So eat real food majority of the time. And what does that look like? It's actually so simple. And I talk about this all the time. It's simple, but it's not easy because there's so many other variables that are contributing to it, right? And there's so much confusing information out there making us think that certain foods are really good for us, certain foods are really bad for us, certain foods shouldn't be eaten, certain foods need to be eaten at this time or in this way. And like there's so many food rules out there and it's just adding so much stress and pressure. But it really is as simple as coming back to eating real food majority of the time. And there's obviously so much I can say about this. I spent three years doing a nutrition degree of my own and have done so much extra study since then and continued to learn about what that actually looks like and how to fuel our body with real food and how to just cut through all the noise. And that's inside my program, The Real Food Way. That's where it's really about teaching you, okay, this is what it means to eat real food, which as I said, it's really simple. Eat whole foods, eat real foods, things like meat, fish, dairy, veggies, fruit, seasonal, preferably, um, herbs, spices, nuts, seeds, legumes, what else am I missing? But essentially they're all real foods, right? These are foods that come from nature. These are the things we want to focus on eating majority of the time. And yes, there's ways we want to build balanced meals for ourselves. Yes, there's particular macronutrient requirements that we have, like certain amounts of protein in every meal and um, how to get enough healthy fats to support the different systems and our needs, how to um, balance out our carb carbohydrate intake and which ones are most supportive and beneficial and ways to optimize our intake of those things. So there's many different things I can teach and share. Um, and that's all within the real food way. If it is something you do want to dive deeper into and do it in a way where you're learning how to create those healthy habits over time. But ultimately, just understanding that it's time to break away from the diet mentality and stop yo-yo dieting, jumping from one to the next, or thinking that the next challenge is going to be the savior, the thing that finally clicks it into place, and understand that we need to educate ourselves about what to actually eat in a really healthy and sustainable way. And like I said, our relationship to food is just as important as what we're also eating. So lots of these kinds of um, lots of the information available to us out there can make us fear certain foods or make us think we have to follow certain rules or guidelines and all of this kind of stuff. And guidelines, yes, rules, no. Let's let go of these food rules and let go of a lot of the pressure and the um, stress that this creates for us. And let's just understand, cool, eating real food majority of the time is what we want to aim for. And this is how we do it for our individual requirements. So educating yourself about what that actually looks like is going to be a really important step to it. 
Another thing that you want to factor in when we are ditching the diets and wanting to get long-term sustainable results is to focus on the holistic nature of health. So as I mentioned, there's those five core healthy habits that I recommend, food, movement, hydration, sleep, and stress, really important. They're the things that I recommend making your five daily non-negotiables, but over time, build them up. Don't be like, cool, Shana said, do these five core healthy habits. They're non-negotiables. And right now you're doing none and you're going to jump to doing all five overnight. That's the all or nothing approach. So let's not do that approach. Let's do the slow, sustainable way. Pick one at a time and build that habit, then move on to the next, right? Building this holistic picture, but giving yourself the patience and grace to do it over time and knowing that there is no hurry. There is no hurry and you will be able to do this and you're more likely to be able to stick to it if you give yourself the time. It's more sustainable that way. It's more sustainable for habit creation. So focusing on that holistic picture. And so they're the five core healthy habits, but there's also other things that impact our health. So I call these the ingredients for a nourished life. And I actually ran a free 10 day challenge, which you can listen to past episodes of the podcast, or they're available here on YouTube as well, depending where you're watching or listening. Um, And that goes through the 10 core ingredients for a nourished life, including the five core healthy habits, but then also things like having an empowered mindset and how important mindset is when it comes to um, food and our relationship to food and the way we approach our health or weight release as well. It's also things like self-love. It's things like emotional health, especially if weight release is one of your goals Getting rid of that emotional baggage that you're carrying around is going to be huge when it comes to releasing the emotional weight that you may be carrying around as well. So it goes into those things, it goes into having a healthy home. And again, there's so much I can share on each of these topics, but just going through and listening to those episodes or watching those videos and starting to familiarize yourself which, with each of those areas is going to be really beneficial for your journey to ditching the diets and actually reaching your health and weight loss goals over time. So there's that. And then what else did I want to say about this? Yeah, diets don't work. What does work is this holistic approach is this approach of being educated, of not having an all or nothing approach, the approach where we build the healthy habits over time. um, And yeah, really understand that there is no pressure around them. And when it comes to food, healing our relationship with food is a huge, huge part of it. So one of the things that I see as the most common obstacles and one of the things that drives people to things like diets or restrictive tendencies is the deeper layers. So it is things like our relationship to food or our emotional health, which are contributing to things like emotional eating or like the binge restrict cycle, which is part of what dieting um, involves, like restricting certain things, which then leads us to eventually binging certain things. Then we feel guilty and shameful about that. So we restrict certain things again. And it's this cycle that we're constantly in. It's that yo-yo dieting cycle that restrict, restrict, restrict until we can't restrict anymore, until we fall off the bandwagon in quotation marks, because there is no bandwagon. This is a lifestyle. But when we don't have a healthy relationship with food, we fluctuate between those of like emotional eating or Uh, the binge restrict cycle or both because they both come back down to that kind of emotional cause the mindset cause and it's got to do with our nervous system as well and like the stress and the overwhelm that so many people are under so really acknowledging and addressing those aspects as well and that's the kind of stuff that i go into in my program mind body food freedom where it's really getting to the core getting into the emotional health side of things getting into the mindset getting into the nervous system regulation healing your relationship with food healing your relationship with your body because your relationship with your body impacts the way that you approach food as well especially if weight release is one of your goals um, that is going to have a huge impact because one of the reasons we restrict is because we're trying to control our body. So we control what we think we can control, which is food and our food intake. And this can lead us in this health unhealthy binge restrict cycle. So addressing that relationship we have with our body and ultimately the relationship we have with ourself and the level of self-love and self-respect for ourselves. Because the more we learn to respect ourselves and love ourselves, the easier it is to show up from that place of love and do these things that are beneficial 
beneficial for us and the things that we know are going to be so good for us, like those core healthy habits, like eating real food majority of the time, like taking the pressure off and not feeling guilt when we do choose to eat something that's not real food. All of that comes back down to self-respect and self-love. So in Mind, Body, Food, Freedom, we go deep, deep, deep into all of those things so that you can really heal your relationship to food from the ground up. And it ripples into getting you off the yo-yo dieting cycle, getting you out of the binge restrict cycle, helping you stop emotional eating, because these are all things that are getting in the way of your health and your weight release goals as well. So there are ways to dive deeper into this work with me if you like. And I would absolutely love to be able to support you. But for today, I want you to really take away that diets don't work. And there's been so many incredible tools and um, tips in this episode for you to get started in ditching those diets and moving towards more food freedom, moving towards having a healthier relationship with food and understanding what to actually do when it comes to our food and our dietary intake. So I hope you've gained a lot from this episode and I look forward to being back in your ears or in your eyes soon.